people nowadays change their opinions in seconds. It can be due to social media, it can be due to something they've read online, to an article they've seen. Well, the main important idea is that organizations and corporations are no longer safe with their operations because they can become immediately the target of the entire public pressure if there is issue going on around their company. And because it is so easy for a company to take damage in terms of its image, in terms of its reputation on the long term, just because of an issue that arises, now we talk about the importance of having a plan for managing issues and crises in terms of companies and corporate reputation and corporate communication. Let's take an example, healthy eating and obesity. The topic is already addressed and discussed within society and it could emerge as an issue in any second. In many instances, before such issues are connected to an organization, before activists link these problems to companies, there can be observed certain concerns. Basically, companies like Coca-Cola or McDonald's or KFC or you name it could observe these concerns within society and they could address them before they turn into issues or crises that could affect the image of their operations. If such a scenario happens, any company needs to be prepared to put in action a plan that manages the issue or the crisis if it turned into a crisis already in order to protect its image and the reputation on the long term. And they do it with marketing, they do it with public relations, external communications. On this channel we call all three of uh, these domains into only one named corporate communication. And in this video of corporate communication we talk about the management of issues and crises. In this video we will talk about everything there is and that you need to know about issues, about crises, what they are, what an issue is, what a crisis is, the difference between these two and more important we will talk about the life cycle from an issue to a crisis and how it develops. Before talking more specifically about issues and crises we need to understand how they appear. We need to understand that they always existed in the public domain also in the past, right? So we talk about the concerns that exist even now in the present and that companies can look at and we need to understand that these concerns can future turn into an issue that can future turn into a crisis. So the most important factor that makes the difference is how much attention they get. We talk about topics such as health, safety, environmental concerns, security, financial risks and regulation and so on. These topics generate debates and concerns within a society. Therefore, the general public often expects a corporate response on these issues. This is why companies need to have everything prepared already. They need to have a marketing campaign prepared, an advertising campaign, a communication campaign. They need to have an entire plan if such an issue or a crisis happens, how they will react. And this is also why the reason to have all these plans is because if you prepare for them, you can anticipate them before they happen and maybe, just maybe, if you are so well prepared, you can stop them, you can prevent them from actually happening. And when I mean that a company can address the issues, I mean that they can do basically anything. They can start from talking to the public from their side how they see the issue and what that issue is in the eyes of a corporation and up to influencing the opinion of the public or maybe even influencing the regulations, the government that creates regulations concerning that issue. Well, in reality, it wouldn't really be the first time when a company wishes to be able to influence the regulations on its domain, right? Because remember, the sole purpose of a company is to make profit. If it has to influence the opinions of the publics about the issues, it will. If it has to influence the opinions of the government or to make regulations about it, it will influence it. Or if, you, if they have to comply to rules, well, they will comply to rules. But remember, their sole purpose is to make profit. When we talk about an issue, we define it as a public concern about organizations' decisions and operations that may or may not also involve a point of conflict in opinions and judgments regarding those decisions and operations. However, Chase is a well-known expert on issues management. 
defines an issue as an unsettled matter which is ready for a decision. Issues involve a matter that is in contention between an organization and another party and require decisive action on the organization in order to protect its reputation. A crisis is defined as an issue that requires not just decisive but also immediate action from the organization. The necessity of immediate action may be triggered by public pressure, intense media attention or because of indirect danger. Carl Weick defines a crisis as a critical and intense issue that threatens the very existence of an organization in terms of its basic assumptions, values and ways of operating. For example, when Shell attempted to dispose of the Brands Spar oil rig in the North Sea, its action led to public boycott and to legislation that not only damaged its reputation, but also challenged the company to change its basic assumptions and values regarding the environmental impact of its business. When we talk about the development of an issue into a crisis, we need to take into consideration and look at every step how it develops over time. The figure displays how issues emerge and how over time they may become more salient and potent as a result of mass media attention and public concern. So what this figure really shows us is how all these issues can turn into a crisis just because of the mass media attention that it receives and also, of course, how important the stakeholders are to the company. If there are public groups that are not really important to the company, it wouldn't be so dangerous for them. But regarding that, more groups can team up against the company and its practices or operations and that can make serious damage to a company's image. At this important stage, it is important for organizations to monitor and scan the environment for shifts in public opinion or latent issues that stakeholders connect with the organization and its industry. So what we can understand from this phase is that news organizations can turn a latent issue into an active issue. And maybe they might have reasons, personal reasons to do that. I'm not saying they do, but they might do it. Or they can also gain more attention from publics. I'm talking about the news media organizations. If they spotlight some stories that they know would catch a lot of attention from the public, right? So there are many interests that media would add its pressure because it has such a large coverage in order to put pressure on companies to change their operations or just solely because it well gains reach for the organization for the news organizations from the audience of course that it is important for a company and more important for its communication practitioners to know how to identify the current stage of an issue so basically based on how much pressure there is from the general public from the public opinion from the mass media an organization needs to do something. And there is expert Haley that created the framework of the life cycle of an issue. It consists of four stages, emerge, debate, codification, and enforcement. The general principle that arises from this framework is that the organizations need to detect issues early on because only in the early stages of emergence and debate can stakeholders or public opinions on an issue be influenced. So what expert Haley says is that the faster or the earlier an organization detects a debate that has the potential to turn into an issue in the future, the faster a company can influence the opinion of the mass publics, right? So they can carry on communication campaigns or marketing campaigns that would change the opinion of the publics on a specific issue and then it won't become an issue in the future anymore. In doing so, companies have the power to influence the way people think and see an issue. And it is very important because if they do it early stage, then the news media organizations cannot frame it anymore. We say that it cannot be codified. So when we say that the news media organizations or a problem, an issue becomes codified, it means that it kind of catches a harmful image, a harmful name. So we won't talk about the, I don't know, fast food. We will talk about the morbidity from eating fast food, right? It gets a code, it gets a name that might sound harmful for the organization's practices. And if that label, if that code is strong enough and negative enough to really be so harmful for organizations, then 
the uh, legislative part will come up with regulations. So then it means that there is the enforcement. There will be law enforcement towards the company in order to follow certain practices. I will give you an example to better understand how the life cycle works from an issue to a crisis. Shell's issue of disposal of the Brands Pal oil rig in the North Sea. When Greenpeace first raised the issue, Shell ignored the emerging issue. That was the emergence state. And it defended the disposal decision as business as usual. Greenpeace framed the issue as an ecological disaster and toxic dump, which came to define how the general public viewed the issue. That was the codification. And finally, through consumer boycotts and political action by many European governments, Shell had to do something about it. This was the enforcement. Before going on to check my channel for other videos about marketing on corporate communications, if you want to learn more about marketing, I've created a dictionary that you can download for free. In the links down in the description, there is a marketing dictionary. It has about 400 terms that are explained. You can take it on your mobile, on your phone, on your laptop to study all these terms when you need to. And also, if you're an entrepreneur, if you opened your very first company or you manage a company, in the link down in the description, there is a business plan that you want to check. I created a manual, not for only a business plan, but a communication plan and a marketing plan for any startup, for any company. It involves all the information that you need to know in order to create a business plan by the book with all the information you need to know, with all the steps that you need to follow, and also a notebook that when you fill in with your personalized information, the outcome is your very own personalized communication strategy, your very own and personalized for your business marketing strategy and business plan. Check it in the links down in the description. And of course, remember that you can support me to create these videos by buying me a coffee, well, I drink quite a lot of coffee in creating these videos for researching all the information, for filming the videos and for editing them so you can watch them for free on YouTube. And you can check the links in the description to buy me a coffee. And also there are the very classic ways to thank me for creating this video is by liking the video. It helps me with a lot with the algorithm by commenting. Leave a comment in the comment section. It helps with the algorithm and subscribe to my channel to see more.